Don't you love it when you watch an older movie and you've never seen it before and you feel like you've been given a gift? Well, it seems like every time I'm given a gift recently, it's in the form of Italian horror. Let's review the beyond. The Beyond stars Catriona McCall, David Warbeck, and is directed by Lucio Fulci. What is up guys? It's time for another Jallo review. I have delved pretty deep into Argento. I've seen a, quite a handful of his movies now. I've seen Bay of Blood by Baba. And a, a lot of people always tell me that are big Jallo enthusiasts that you got to check out Fulci. Fulci is a different flavor than, you know, his counterparts. Fulci goes for that dark, more atmospheric, uh, and really just scary uh, horror. And boy, is the beyond something else. This was just so surprising in the best way. I just love when I find a movie like this. And first off, big shout out to Stephen Arthur who sent me this. I believe this is the Australian version of the beyond. Uh, and he sent me this like, I did an unboxing for uh, all the stuff that he sent me probably like a couple years ago. That's how long sometimes it takes me to get to some of these movies. But uh, man, every time I've watched Italian horror, it's just like, wow, it just gets better and better and better. And I, I thought watching a lot of these movies that they would be great, but they would have pretty much the same flavor over and over. And you do get that with certain directors like Argento's movies, as great as they are, you're going to see some similarities as you would. I mean, it's, it's Argento. He's the director. But Fulci, there's a completely different flavor in tone, just visually, in the way the scares are presented, in the effects, pretty much all across the board. And I would say I've done quite a few Jolly films now, and I want to give a couple shout outs. Uh, just, I guess you could call them like influences of mine. I've always given Dylan, my, my late friend Dylan, credit for introducing me to Jallo films. But then I've watched some others talk about Jallo films like uh, Justin from previously Ghostbait 1. And now he's called The Maniac because somebody literally hacked his account. And this is a guy that had a channel for quite a few years. But luckily the community came together and he has even more subscribers than he did when his account was hacked. But I can't recommend Justin's channel enough. Look for The Maniac, or you can type in Ghostbait1, you'll find it too. Alice Sweet Alice is a very underrated 1970s slasher movie. When people hear slasher movies, they usually think of the 80s, but the genre truly began in the 70s. As far as like a wealth of knowledge in not just Italian horror, but just horror in general, Definitely check out his channel. One more, Josh from The Horror Guru. His channel's been around forever, and he's another one that, like, I remember I watched his review for Grizzly, which is one of the first movies I remember seeing when I was a kid. And I, I had to reach out to him and say, hey, man, I loved your review for Grizzly. It brought back so many memories for me. Greetings, gorehounds, and welcome back to When Animals Attack. <laughs> Elsewhere, two female campers run into Ranger Tom and give him what I like to call the I want to f you eyes, while Tom warns them to be careful out there all alone. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> he just pitch smacked her arm clean off! <laughs> Physics be damned, that is one piptastic bear. But he does a lot of Italian horror as well. You can tell he really loves Italian horror, so definitely wanted to give him a shout out and Ghostbait 1, uh, or The Maniac, a shout out. But anyway, we're gonna talk about this movie, The Beyond. And this movie begins uh, in the 1920s, I believe, in Louisiana, uh, at this hotel. And you have this group there on the hunt for this, this warlock, which is kind of like a male witch. You ungodly warlock. <laughs> and they kill him, but he's actually in the hotel, which is a gateway or one of the seven gateways to hell. And so it's pretty much condemned after that. And so then 60 years later, this girl, uh, Liza, she inherits the hotel. And so she comes, takes it over. And of course, when she gets to the hotel, all this really strange and wacky shit starts happening. No! 
First thing she does is she runs into this blind character by the name of Emily. Emily is probably one of the most important characters of this movie just because she's kind of like the harbinger of doom in this movie and she's warning Emily about what you're getting yourself into. She's blind because she literally stared hell right in the face and it's kind of like the, the, the woman that turns to salt. You know, if she looks at it, she turns to salt. Well, she became blind. It's like a curse that's put on her. And so she's kind of like at hell's beck and call. That's like the curse that she must live with for the rest of her life. In his room had found a key. What key? The seven gateways to hell. And probably one of the most striking uh, scenes in this movie is actually when she's attacked by her own dog. Which if I could sidestep for a second, the last three movies that I've seen involve either dog attacks or dog kills. Madhouse, People Under the Stairs, and now this movie. And those first two movies had Rottweilers. So I don't know what's going on. Why am I seeing all these movies with dog attacks? But I digress. But that scene... No, Spike! Go away! I don't want to go back! You can't take me! is one of many very graphic, I'm talking like the thing, practical effects, graphic scenes that you could ever see in a, in a freaking horror movie. This is one of those movies that delivers constantly, over and over again in terms of scares. If you're going into a horror movie for just really scary atmosphere, like that haunted house atmosphere, because really this is kind of a haunted house movie, uh, then look no further than the beyond. One thing I love about good supernatural movies, because I'm really picky with them, is when you feel like you can reach out and you can touch it, or better yet, it can reach out and touch you. There were scenes in this movie that gave me vibes from like the fog. Remember in the fog where the ghosts on the ship, they could literally stab the victims? You know, you felt like you could literally touch them. That's the way the ghosts are in this movie. A more recent example is We Are Still Here. I love good super, supernatural movies, don't get me wrong, but there's just a lot of ones that I just don't really care for. I like these movies to feel real, to feel threatening, to, you know, to feel like they could literally chop your head off. That's what I like. I don't like the movies where they get into your mind and then you go crazy. I mean, if they're directed well, yeah, but these feel real. They feel deadly as hell. It's just scary atmospherically. Everything works about this. Now, there are a couple of key scenes in this movie from a violent standpoint that I have to address. Oh my God. One scene, there's this widow. She comes into this morgue, into this room where all these dead bodies are laying on the table. Kind of like what happened with Emily. She looks upon like the warlock guy from 60 years ago. His, his dead body's hanging in there. Ah! Mommy. The look of fear on her is just insane. And then she, go, she lays down and then this like acidic liquid drips on her face and you literally get to see her face melt. But the care and the attention that goes into these effects, you can see pretty much the full process of what somebody's face would look like if it was melting from you know the skin going down to the tissue, going down to the bone, everything. It's extremely graphic and very realistic. There's another scene too, which might be one of the most popular scenes in this movie. It's the spider scene. I've literally had people after I saw this movie ask me, should I watch this movie if I'm, you know, uh, if I suffer from arachnophobia? And I pretty much told them no. <laughs> this is one of the most frightening, freakiest spider scenes I've ever seen. I don't like tarantulas anyway. They freak me out. And so the tarantulas in this movie, they're walking slowly towards this guy who falls and they like crawl in his mouth and you can see them, the, like the stinger going into his tongue and his tongue like expands and blood comes out. I mean, it's just so graphic. His lip gets torn apart, just all over his face. Ooh, it just gives me the willies. But as I'm watching this movie and all these violent scenes, I just could not believe what I was seeing. I, you know, I was just fully intoxicated with this movie. You know, it's, it felt new to me, like I'd never seen anything like this before. And sure, we have tons of graphic movies here in America, but this just felt different. It just felt creepy, like creepy as hell. Now, as we all know, Lucio Fulci is known for his movie, Zombie which is a zombie movie. And that movie was so popular that they wanted him to add a zombie scene in this movie. So the last act of this movie, you have John and Liza 
uh, in the morgue and you see all these zombies coming after them. So it's great because then you get this like nice little zombie section of the movie, which makes this movie really cool. I prefer a movie like this that gives you a nice variety of everything you like. It's almost like a buffet as opposed to just a straight up zombie movie. I'm really, really picky with zombie movies. I get bored with them pretty quick unless there's just some great inventive stuff going on. Like Night of the Living Dead is still like the greatest zombie movie ever made in my mind because the story is just so good. And also, if you remember my Madhouse review, I was talking about how I like movies that are kind of a hodgepodge. That movie had an Italian director and the film was actually filmed in Georgia. Well, this one, a lot of the uh, exteriors were filmed in Louisiana. The interiors were filmed in Rome. So again, you have a little bit of mix in flavor there. And also like with Italian movies, you have to watch the subtitles because sometimes the actors look like they're speaking American. And then sometimes you can tell that they're speaking their native language. And that's common with Jello films. But this movie, I think most of the movies all in English. So it works out. But you can tell a lot of these actors, they're not English speaking. And I think you'll know what I'm talking about when you watch the movie. Because when they recite their lines, it literally sounds like they're just reciting their lines. Like they don't really understand what they're saying. You get that in these movies. But to me, it kind of adds to the flavor of it. Listen, I'll be going into town later. Would you please make me out a list of all the things we need? Yes. Okay. But guys, uh, in the end, I'm giving this freaking movie a trap on an island. Just in violence alone, in the way the practical effects are handled alone, it feels like, it feels like the thing in terms of practical effects. Uh, it's just a really creepy vibe to the atmosphere. This is probably, at this point, the most atmospheric Jello film I've ever seen. And it's creepy. It's really scary. And at the end of the day, if you can have anything out of a horror movie, let it be scary. This was one of those movies, after I watched it, I wanted to research it immediately. I was just like, I need to know everything about this movie. Uh, and and I, I found out that like this is one of Tarantino's favorite horror movies of all time. It all makes sense. This movie in 1998, and I hate to turn into IMDb for you guys, trivia, but in 1998, this movie was actually finally seen in its full uncut version in America here because uh, it wasn't available before that. And Tarantino's, one of his companies, they re fully restored the print and, and you get the full uncut version, which is on this wonderful version that Stephen Arthur sent me. So anyway, guys, I wish I could talk for another hour about the Beyond, but anyway, we gotta go. So let me know your thoughts in the comments on the Beyond. Um, if you haven't seen it, I can't recommend it enough. Also, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day and on Fridays. We do free for Fridays. Follow me at Drum Dums on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and Drum Dum out.